Do you have a stereo in your home or an unused set of computer speakers? Maybe they're collecting dust in the corner. Well, today I'm gonna show you how this little Belkin Soundform Connect AirPlay 2 adapter allows you to take those speakers and connect them to your home network and turn them into wireless smart AirPlay 2 speakers. Now, the adapter costs $99, which probably leads you to think about why would you wanna do this in the first place? Well, AirPlay 2 allows you to have multi-room audio playback between any HomePods, Apple TVs, and AirPlay 2 enabled speakers, either with something like this adapter or other speakers like a Sonos speaker that might have AirPlay 2 built in. All right, editor Eric here, just wanting to jump in and say a special thanks to Belkin for sending me this adapter completely free of charge, but with no strings attached. This video is my honest opinions about the product. Now, the main benefit, in my opinion, of multi-room audio is that you can hear the quiet details of your music no matter where you are within the different rooms playing because you're never too far from any one speaker. And on top of this, you can automate the collection of different groups of these speakers and what music they're playing using scenes in Apple HomeKit. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Now, you might be wondering, why not just get a HomePod Mini? Well, I think they're really two different products. The HomePod Mini is a great voice assistant and is a great smart home hub, but it's not a great speaker. The Soundform Connect will allow you to connect what are probably better speakers to AirPlay than what you get out of the box with a HomePod Mini. In the box, you get the unit itself, of course, along with the manuals, a USB-A to C power cable, and a USB-A wall plug. Now, I added this AirPlay 2 adapter to my computer speakers down here in my office so that I can easily automate playback of music while I'm down here working. And setup was pretty straightforward. You just connect the audio cables to the speakers or stereo you wanna turn into AirPlay and then connect the power cable on the other end then it's time to add it to HomeKit. Now, this device has one of those cool, fancy NFC pairing options where you can simply tap your phone in the Home app and it will pick up the HomeKit code via NFC and start to set up the device. For me, I was just having trouble getting this to work reliably uh, in this particular case, but entering the numbers manually like a caveman didn't seem to cause me any problems. And then from there, the speaker will show up in the home app within the particular room, as well as in the menu of AirPlay 2 audio sources you have to pick from on your various Apple devices. Now the whole setup to this point can be done completely inside Apple's home app. You don't need to install any third-party software and that's a beauty of HomeKit that it works like that so frequently. Now Belkin does have their own app which has some useful additional features including it can use your iPhone's microphone to iron out any latency issues so if maybe these speakers are on some big fancy stereo that has different latency than an AirPlay 2 speaker you might have in the next room over then you can use the microphone and the app to sort that out so that the latency on the AirPlay 2 adapter matches the other speakers you might pair it with. Now, I was just plugging in speakers directly to the adapter, so I didn't really have any problems with that. But it's good to know that Belkin's thought through that use case and has an option if you run into problems. I also imagine that if or when Belkin ever wants to ship a software update for this adapter, it'll probably be done through their app as well. Now, you might be wondering about lossless audio. This is uh, higher quality audio that's usually about CD quality in terms of it's not compressed like a lot of the MP3s and streaming music that we listen to on a regular basis. And the AirPlay 2 specs can support 24-bit 48 kilohertz audio. And this Belkin Soundform adapter is rated to support 16 bits at 44.1 kilohertz, which puts it squarely 
into the uh, middle tier of Apple's new high resolution music offerings. So it's unclear at this point because uh, Apple Music's high res tiers haven't actually come out to the public, uh, whether AirPlay 2 devices like this Soundform Connect will be able to support the highest tiers of Apple Music high resolution audio playback, but it can at least get you much better than compressed MP3 or what you get through something like Bluetooth. You might also be wondering about other apps outside of Apple Music for lossless audio, uh, maybe something like Tidal, and if you have access to those and provided they can stream over AirPlay 2, everything should work just as usual. You might also be wondering about spatial audio or just surround sound music in general. Now, chances are if you have a surround sound audio system, it's probably hooked up to a TV. And I would say in that case, just get an Apple TV. Now I'm here in the home app in my office and I wanna set up a new scene that allows me to do some automated playback with these speakers and the adapter. So I'm gonna go here and it would help if the adapter is actually plugged in. So I'm here in my office and well, my hair is just like crazy. So I'm gonna go and add a scene in my office and choose custom. And I'm gonna call this ambient work music. And then I'm gonna go under accessories, you'll see the stereo. So this shows up in HomeKit as a stereo, which is a category of devices in HomeKit. And then it says it's going to play audio. And so if I choose in here, I can choose what audio it's going to play. So uh, right now it's just going to use the current volume. But if I wanted to, I could set a custom volume for this scene. And then I can choose whether it's going to play audio, pause audio, resume whatever was previously playing, or just use this as a scene to adjust volume. So there are a lot of automation potentials there that you can kind of chain together or trigger at different times of day, etc. But I'm gonna just choose audio to play right now. And I have an Apple Music subscription, so I'm gonna go ahead and search for the pure ambient playlist on Apple Music. It can be a good, just uh, very um, simple background music to work to. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add that playlist. And so then it will play that playlist when I trigger this scene. So I have the scene, it's set to play that audio. I'm gonna hit done to go ahead and create the scene. And now you'll see right here on my screen, I have ambient work music as a scene and I can tap that. And it's gonna go ahead and trigger playback of that music right here on my speakers. All right, Editor Eric here one more time to explain another way that we use this kind of AirPlay automation at home with HomeKit and we use it all the time. It's a big help. And that one of the killer ways to use this is grouping a number of speakers together with specific music to play. And then you can trigger that as you can see in the tutorial just with one tap of a scene or asking Siri to turn on that scene. And we have a dinner jazz scene which shuffles the curated piano bar playlist from Apple Music and does it in a group across a number of speakers in our downstairs. So it's a really nice way to just class up the downstairs uh, as we're having dinner. And it's so common now that my two-year-old even knows about the scene and wants it when we don't put it on. What did you get? As far as using this device, I found the experience to be pretty good, especially from iPhone and iPad. Now, macOS with macOS version 11 is, seems to be a little limited in how well it works with AirPlay 2 speakers like this. Um, I've had trouble getting audio from Safari to play reliably and other apps, but using the music app on my Mac works fine. Uh, so it just depends on what you're trying to use it with. I wouldn't count on being able to say, have this as like a mostly connected desktop speakers through the same AirPlay channel. Um, you might have to, you know, for example, these speakers have multiple audio inputs, so I can have one that's my computer speakers and then change the input and it's AirPlay. And that's one of the other downsides is that if you do happen to have speakers that are a stereo system that's multiple inputs, you're obviously gonna have to have the stereo on uh, and onto the AirPlay input if you want music to just play through it. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I think if you already have speakers, let's say some 
old computer speakers or a stereo that you'd like to bring in to be part of your smart home, this is a great adapter to do that and $99 for that can be a great deal. But I'd say if you're looking to go out and buy new speakers, uh, you know, most of the time I would look at either, let's say, a, a, a AV receiver that has AirPlay to, uh, built in, and you can find some of those on Apple's HomeKit website. I'll link that in the description, and they have a list of AV receivers there. Also, if you're looking at more all-in-one speaker options, Sonos has some really great speakers that support AirPlay 2 at all different sizes and price ranges. And if speaking of Sonos, I recently reviewed their Sonos Roam speaker, which is actually a wireless and portable AirPlay 2 speaker. So it has a built-in battery, you can take it out to the back porch, and you can also use that speaker with Bluetooth. So that should be linked somewhere on the screen. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.